Well, hello everyone. This is John Byrne with Poets and Quants. Welcome to Fridays with Sandy, the founder of hbsguru.com. He's in the house and we have a candidate from Ethiopia today to evaluate. Yes. John, here's a question for you. Yeah. How many, how many current students at Harvard Business School are Ethiopian passport holders? I'm going to guess uh, six. Am I right? It's, so it, 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 over the past 10 years, it's either zero or one. Is it that little? Yeah. Wow. That's remarkable. By the way, do you, could you introduce yourself or John, fill, fill in our uh fill in the background of our candidate his bawe here uh, yeah my name is his uh, i am from ethiopia i am 29 years old uh, i have a basic degree in mechanical engineering from Naval university uh just my gpa is 3.43 out of four okay you got to uh, slow down you're you're running over a lot of important information okay you're from ethiopia that's good if schools are going to love you okay do you know people from your college or friends of yours who have applied to business schools from Ethiopia? No. Yikes. Um, How did you figure this out? <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, it, it was my desire to pursue an MBA since uh, I graduated from Magal University. Uh, I just tried to apply to different schools, but I didn't because I don't have a, a job experience. And also, okay. Uh, let's 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 go through your resume, uh, okay. Just so we get the outline here. The way I've got it now, for the past five months, you've been an interpreter at Alpha Systems in Addis Ababa. Addis Ababa. Yes, Addis Ababa. Addis Ababa. Yeah, uh, you've been an, a, an interpreter for five months, and then before that, for two years and eight months. You were the general manager of a uh, liquid detergent manufacturing company in Ethiopia. Could you tell us about that? That's real important. Yeah, uh, I was the general manager and chairman of uh, the company. It was established in, I was the co-founder of the company. It was established in partnership with other uh, four persons uh, and they elected me as the chairman. Uh, I have done Good. a lot of things there. Can you, uh, can you give us any statistics about that company, like what its revenues were or how many people it employed, just so we get a sense of what its size was? Okay. Uh, its size is, uh, I can't say it is a big company. It is uh, just a small company. Uh, but uh, we have a, a good revenue when we compare to our society or when we compare to our countries. A company, it is. I'm having, right. a, I'm having a little trouble here and here. Just it, it was a small company. How, how many people were was it just you and a couple of shareholders, or can you give me any metric in terms of revenue or employees okay. just to give me a feeling for the company? Around 14 employees, 14. yeah, Around yeah, that's 14. a big deal. And uh, and what did you do? You were the general manager, so what did that entail? Yeah, my responsibility spans from uh, just negotiating with uh, negotiating with uh, uh, suppliers to uh, just managing uh, the employee. Uh, okay, did, then... did you did you? This is important, and it's a good tip for everyone. Did you did you manage other people, other employees? Yes, that's important. Uh, uh, I'm not sure I saw that. You should, stre you should stress that in your story and your resume, okay? okay. That you managed other employees. Yes. And you were there for two years and eight months, okay? And yeah. then, okay, this is just between me, you, and uh, the, us girls here. Is there a <laughs> gap in your resume before that of one year, four months? Yeah, it is. You, may, you might know there was a war in Ethiopia. Do you know about that? Yes. Uh -huh. So yeah, our company so, was located in Nogada Tigray, which was the main safe center of the world. So we don't have uh, the necessary equipment or the necessary. Yeah, okay. So what, what did you do during this? is important. This could make you a very valuable candidate. I was only reading books. 
Reading books. Reading books. You should put that yeah. in there. Self-study during the war. You know, Where? yeah. Even here in Addis, I was in Addis Ababa. Uh, we don't have the freedom to move from place to place because uh, we may pre be persecuted by the government. Uh, you, you know, uh, right now it is better. Because yeah, no, that's great. Uh, I mean, that's great uh, for, for you to talk about as being experienced that business schools would deeply care about. So you should put that in your resume. You should say that over that Absolutely. period of time during the war, you were involved in self-study and reading X number of books on X number of topics. Okay, okay. thank you. You put the date frame and then you say, mm -hmm. uh, lived in Addis Ababa during the Ethiopian war and involved myself in this, 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 and this. Okay. I'm okay. impressed. Yep. <laughs> The only war I could get involved in is with my neighbors over parking. <laughs> <laughs> Although that can get pretty fierce, but we'll leave that for another day. Indeed. Uh, and then you worked for the government of Ethiopia Data Collector Ethiopia Statistics Agency. Yeah. For a few months. Yeah. So what was that about? It was uh, just after my graduation. Uh, I have worked for uh, almost three months. Uh, I, my responsibility was uh, collecting the work, collecting data, and uh, analyzing the status, and also just reporting them, comparing. Okay, them. let's oh, good, good. You've got a bachelor of science in mechanical engineering. Yes. From Mikel, is that the way it's pronounced? Yes, Marala. Hmm. Okay, here, I'm going to cut to the chase. Okay. This is a critical question that any applicant from a lesser, an underrepresented country like Ethiopia should be aware of. What do you want your classmates to know about Ethiopia? What three or four things? Yeah, uh, Ethiopia is uh, the most diversified uh, country in the world. Uh, we have more than 80 ethnicity and the nations and nationality. And we have uh, also more than 80 different languages. Um, Ethiopia is uh, the one country which is not colonized by any foreign uh, nations. That's important. E Ethiopia was never colonized. So it yes. was never a colony. Well, that's good news and bad news. So what, that's how it's got all those languages. Do most yeah. people speak English? And um, just, I don't know, maybe most of them are studying in English, but they may not speak English. Okay, good. I, this, may be, this may sound ridiculous, but I got to do it here. You, your GPA was 3.43 out of 4. Do, do you have any sense of what your class standing was? Uh, I think I was a team leader and throughout my undergraduate classes. I was... Uh, the team leader, a uh, group of five. I was a good. Leader. That's but that that doesn't. How many people were in your graduating class? Around uh, one hundred fifty or hundred. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, out of those one, call it a hundred people. Do you know where you ranked in terms of grades? I think A's or seven. Nineteen. That's a pretty good answer. Okay. So you should put on your resume top twenty percent. Graduating okay. GPA. Yeah. Okay. Because the 3.43 in America, America has tremendous grade inflation. So uh, you wouldn't be, if you had a 3.4 GPA at an Ivy League school, you would be in barely the top half of the class. So make sure you put top 20%. Okay. Good. Now, you, uh, you say you want to attend a top business school in the United States. What do you, do you have uh, schools in mind? Yeah, schools. Um, my favorite school is Harvard University. <laughs> but, okay, uh, let's deal with that. Nowadays, yeah. I came to, uh, I went to study at Darden. What, 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 Harvard is a good school. It's a good choice. What others, have you done much research about American business schools? Like, what, yeah. what uh, two or three other schools would you think about uh, would be really good for you? 
I have several schools in my mind, uh, such as Babson College and also um, Weatherhead. Okay, Babson, what was what did you say after that? Weatherhead Case Western in Cleveland. Oh, 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 Weatherhead. Yeah, that's a good choice. Okay. Yeah, look, I, I think that one, one missing uh, data point, which is important for us to evaluate your chances, is a standardized test, which you haven't yet taken. Uh, because yeah. you have an engineering background, we would assume that you would do fairly well on that test. But, you know, we don't know for sure. Um, <clears throat> because, you know, there is some disadvantage uh, because English is a second language to you. Hey, John, you let me cut to the chase. Uh, Go ahead. Howie, yeah, if you're, if you're interested in going to a, a top business school, yes. you need to, to take the GMAT and keep taking it. Take it two, three, four times. Your score goes up. If you're saying that sounds crazy, okay. the best sacrifice you could make for the payoff at this point in your life. If you, the difference in your case between a GMAT of like 650 and 710 is colossal. If you had a 710 GMAT, you would have an outside chance of getting into Harvard Business School. Am I crazy, John? I think the one issue too is though he he worked at his own company. So yeah, there's you know, so there's no filtering uh that the school can rely on. Uh I mean if he had worked for a highly selective employer, that would be another sense of right. Filter. But we're we're dealing with what we got here. Right yeah. now he's he's <laughs> you know an interpreter. Uh, and that's just, that's a yourself that's a self employment. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then when you worked at the uh, liquid detergent manufacturing share company with fourteen employees, when you write that up, you have to stress what a big deal that was, how you supervised people, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Yeah. So they, 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 the schools have never have never heard of that company. So you have to prove that it was a big deal. That and a 710 GMAT and coming from Ethiopia, you've got an outside shot at Harvard. They're looking for Ethiopians. And it's just, it's also an interesting development story. A business school would be very attracted to you. Meet them halfway and take the GMAT five times. What, what's the big deal? Okay, take the GMAT five times, go to Harvard, and you, you will come back and be president of Ethiopia, my man. Okay? <laughs> uh, that's, that's probably true. You know? <laughs> that yeah. really is. And obviously, you, I mean, you should apply to five or six schools um, and, and, and a couple that are a reach. Look, Harvard is still going to be a reach. But oh, you for, sure. Yeah. for sure. For sure. Tell them what schools you think you should apply to, John. Well, he mentioned Babson and Weatherhead, which obviously are not in the top 25. I, I might uh, go to look at places like Indiana, Michigan, UNC, Chapel Hill, places like that. Uh, yeah, but there's still a gap between those and Babson. What, what's a Babson. safe school? Babson is a safer school. What is a school that might be a safe school but that is more national than Babson. Well, you could do uh, Vanderbilt, perhaps, or Emory. Yeah. And those are really terrific MBA programs, great business schools, um, but not as highly selective as, uh, obviously, you know, the M7 or Harvard, or even yeah. Indiana or um, Cornell's a possibility, too. Yeah, uh, but Berkeley. Hard. Y Yale. Yale's a good choice. Yeah. That's probably true. Tough to get into. It's a reach school. I wouldn't call it safety, but I still think, you know, the fact that you're from Ethiopia and very few candidates come from there. If you can get into the 700 GMAT score, yeah. plus, 700 plus. NYU, gonna... have, you, have you thought about that? NYU? Yeah. Cornell? What about that? Yeah, I think, Just... Cornell, I think Cornell could be a shot too, frankly. Yeah. Uh, the look, the, the fact that you're coming from that country is huge. But, but in your resume, you really need to make clear that the company uh, that you were general manager of employed over 100 people, had revenues of whatever, 
uh, and was successful. That's very important in your resume and your presentation. Yeah, and you've worked for the government. You then were, you then were for one year and four months, lived in a war zone and engaged in self-study. That, is, that would be one of the great resume lines I've ever seen. I, I'm not pulling your leg here, man. Put <laughs> that in your resume and talk about it. True. That is, that is an experience that makes you unique. Very true. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, good luck to you. All right. So go for it and study for the GMAT. Get that 700 plus score and you're going to be golden. If you can't get a 700, I think you are looking at a Babson or a Case Western. Okay. So there you go. All right. This is uh, Fridays with Sandy. Sandy, thank you so much again. Good luck to our candidate. I want to see you here next year, man. I'll buy you lunch. (laughs) All right. Good luck on your journey.